In 2016, Tesla announced the development of the Tesla solar roof. It's different than a typical PV system. There's no bulky solar panels on the roof for us to easily identify that we're responding to a structure with a solar system. Instead, the power producing cells are actually integrated into the roofing material itself. So it acts as a, a roof covering and also a solar collection system. Rescuers may have some concerns when interacting with the Tesla solar roof. In this short training video, we're gonna address those concerns and provide some simple solutions so that you can operate effectively and safely on the Tesla solar roof. Here in a minute, we're gonna talk about the basic electrical concepts that apply to the Tesla solar roof, and we'll also talk about the specific electrical layout for the solar roof. The Tesla solar roof is safe for us to cut through or to crush even the solar producing cells within the roof. Later, Nick Papa is gonna show you some various techniques for vertical ventilation when deemed necessary by your department. And we'll talk about removing the Tesla solar roofing tiles in order to sound the roof and to travel on the roof to get to your ventilation location. Let's take a look now at some basic electrical concepts and how they apply to the Tesla solar roof. The construction of the Tesla solar roof is really quite simple. The solar producing cells are mounted on top of Firestone clad guard. Clad guard is just a thin moisture barrier that will not affect our vertical ventilation operation. The solar tiles are mounted directly on the clad guard. The wiring for the tiles is hidden below the tiles themselves in between the tiles and the clad guard. Later we'll show you how the Tesla solar roof tiles are mounted on their hardware. Each solar tile represents itself as three shingles. A single tile appears to be three shingles on the roof. And one to four of these tiles can be wired together to create branches. These branches are then wired to what's called a diode trunk harness. The diode trunk harness carries the electricity from all the panels through the roof, usually near the ridge line. Typically, only about 16 volts is present in each branch. Although the diode trunk harness operates at a much higher voltage, all of the testing conducted indicated that there is almost zero risk of shock or electrocution when cutting or crushing the tiles or when cutting the diode trunk harness. This is in part because of the fact that the system is not earth grounded anywhere on the roof. Tesla solar roof is also equipped with a rapid shutdown device. The rapid shutdown device is located in close proximity to the solar array and it serves to disconnect the circuit leaving the roof and traveling to the system's inverter. This device, at a minimum, reduces the circuit to a low voltage beyond itself. In order to better understand the potential risks in any high voltage circuit, we must first understand the concept of a basic electrical circuit and the path in which a circuit will flow. Whether we're talking about direct current or alternating current, they are similar in the way that in order for the current to flow, there must be a path in which the electrons will travel. In this example, we will use the Tesla solar roof. In this circuit, power is being produced by the solar tiles, and it travels to the inverter mounted below. If the path is interrupted, say by a firefighter cutting into the wire, the electricity will no longer flow. If the firefighter then touches one side of the cut circuit, he will not receive a shock because the circuit is not earth grounded. However, if he was to somehow come in contact with both sides of the cut wire, there is potential for shock, especially with ungloved hands. It should be noted that in this DC circuit, cutting the wire does not present a risk to the firefighter because they would not be the path of least resistance for the current to flow. However, in AC circuits, like we interact with during overhaul operations in structure fires, things are much different. In this scenario, the firefighter only needs to come in contact with one side of the circuit because it is earth grounded. Additionally, if a conductive tool is used to cut the wire, 
the rescuer could receive a shock because the circuit is earth grounded and the firefighter could become the path of least resistance for the current to flow. It's a little tricky to understand, but because the solar roof is a non-earth grounded DC circuit, the possibility of a firefighter receiving a shock is highly unlikely. Therefore, conducting normal roof operations, including cutting or crushing any part of the solar roof system on the roof, is deemed safe practice. Certainly, normal overhaul operations on a residential or commercial structure fire are much more dangerous. Okay, now let's take a close look at the actual shingle itself. It's pretty simple. It's mounted with four feet. These feet are mounted at the top of each shingle on the roof. The shingle itself actually cantilevers or lifts up on those feet. It pivots there. Below, when we lift up a shingle, you'll see you can see the wiring for the shingles. And then we also see the feet for the shingle that rests below this one. So for us, if we want to remove the Tesla solar shingles, we can come down below the shingle and actually pry them up we can then move the shingles out of the way with basically any tool. Later, Papa's gonna show you best practice for removing the solar shingles. Now, there's a couple of different reasons why we'd wanna remove the shingles. One is sounding. We're unable to sound a Tesla solar roof through the shingles. So if we're gonna do any sounding on the roof or operate off of our ladder, we're gonna to need to pull the shingles in the area that we're walking or working to make sure that we've got a good roof underneath us. The other reason that we may want to pull the shingles out of the way is if we're moving horizontally on the roof. If you're moving horizontally on Tesla roof, you can actually remove a line or two lines of shingles and this top of the shingle here below where you've ripped off can provide a good footing. So that's another reason why we may want to move the solar shingles off the roof. Again, a little later, Papa will show you how that's done. I'm Nick Papa. Now that you've been provided with the essential background information, we are gonna discuss and demonstrate the procedures and techniques for operating on the Tesla solar roof. If you deem that vertical ventilation is necessary, given the conditions and your operating procedures, we are gonna provide you with the insight to do so in the most effective and efficient means to accomplish that objective. So let's get started. As Brock mentioned earlier, one of the chief concerns when operating in this type of roof is the slip and fall potential. Similar to that of metal deck or slate roof, traction is a concern. Regardless of the pitch, it is not advisable to walk directly on the tiles themselves. Now this is not an electrical concern, this is strictly a matter of traction. To combat this concern, we have come up with two approaches which we are gonna show you in detail. For the first evolution, we're going to deploy a roof ladder and work off of that roof ladder to perform our cuts. The second evolution, we are going to clear a pathway by stripping the tiles and getting down to the decking to create a pathway to our cut location. Now we're going to show you what that looks like. For our first evolution, we're gonna be operating off of a roof ladder to perform our cuts. Before transitioning onto the roof ladder, it is imperative that you ensure that the hooks of the roof ladder have a solid bite into the ridge cap, just as you would if you were operating on a metal roof. Once you transition onto the roof ladder, you have to identify your area of operation. Once you've done that, the next step is to strip the shingles back. This is gonna provide you with a footing and also allow you to sound out as you move across. We're gonna show you in detail as we demonstrate this evolution and you can see the methods that the firefighters are gonna to utilize to strip the shingles, utilize the, sh the shingles as footing and to perform the cuts.
For this next evolution, we're going to demonstrate how to strip and rip the tiles to get down to the decking to effectively sound out and travel to the area of operation when not utilizing a roof ladder. Whenever operating on the roof, it's critical that you remain aware of your positioning in relation to your means of egress. You want to make sure that you keep your back to your means of egress, or in other words, you're positioning yourself in between the opening that you're creating and that means of egress. In this short video, I hope I've provided you with the electrical information that you need to operate aggressively and without hesitation when you're tasked with vertical ventilation on a Tesla solar roof. By following the tactical recommendations outlined in this video, you now possess the direction and the practical skills to operate on a Tesla solar roof. We want to thank Tesla for supporting us with the materials and the information that was so critical in developing this important training. We also want to thank CAL FIRE. The CAL FIRE Training Center has supported us with a location for our shoot and helped us with the peer review and training development. We also want to acknowledge our peer review team. Amazing firefighters and engineers from all over the world have come together to make this training possible. This team was put together by myself and Bobby Halton. We appreciate you watching our videos. Take care and be safe.